I'm Dr. Paul Letterer, and today I'm here to talk to you about the kinds of clinical experiences I see every day that actually make my day. Uh, one such experience was a senior in high school who came to me about a week ago suffering from a second concussion, yes, two concussions from football, the first of which was not as severe as the second. And it was the second concussion that following MRIs that were normal continued to give him certain visual symptoms that were causing him difficulty in school, difficulty with his concentration, and sensitivity to other phenomena that he did not know were linked to the traumatic brain injury he had suffered. Now, what is interesting is that this young man was referred by his physical therapist who was more aware of the kind of symptoms that could relate to visual conditions. So that he, when he came in, no need for glasses, no sight problems, no eye turning, it was unlikely that people saw that there was a visual condition that existed. Yet a classic triad of visual conditions do arise when they have a traumatic brain injury can occur, even a mild one. These conditions, convergence and sufficiency, difficulty coordinating your eyes together, causing loss of place, rereading, spacing out over time, the inability to focus causing fatigue and strain and intermittent blur, especially in swishing your focusing far to near, and also this inability to selectively ignore stimuli that are at what we call the lower frequencies in vision, flickering lights, unexpected movement, the more primitive part of the systems that pick up on those orientations of alarm. Those things cannot be selectively ignored and often closing your peripheral vision to ignore those things, sitting in the back of the room where your side vision is more camouflaged, avoiding going to shopping centers, fluorescent lights, those kinds of phenomena induce these kinds of symptoms that often cause a great deal of distress to an individual. The visual problems that affect their reading and performance start to affect their comprehension and the spacing out seems to be defined as sometimes a cognitive processing problem or actually it's related to a physical coordination problem disrupted by the head injury. Or the motion sensitivity becomes an area to escape from, an area where almost an agoraphobic feeling of avoiding those sensitivities becomes the primary goal of an individual with these problems. Yet not knowing these are classic symptoms of traumatic injury are, are it, it, or makes the situation even more sad because what is the patient left to think that those are from? Even just explaining those symptoms, defining it by diagnostic testing, defined in his mind that he understood that someone was asking the right questions, that the things he was noticing were explainable, and that some of these conditions were treatable, either by the ability of utilizing vision therapy, prisons, yoke prisms, chromatic tints to calm down motion sensitivity, or even accommodations for longer time on school tests, or letters to the college to explain what he had encountered in his senior year at high school. These are the conditions in the initial exam that seem to not only make my day, but tell you what I do and why I do it, and why it's such an addicting field for me over my lifetime.